When you're deciding what to put on your wall, there really is not a lot of rules. You want to put something that is meaningful to you. Hi, I'm Lisa Moody. I'm an interior designer. Today we're going to be talking about hanging a gallery wall. It can be quite a daunting thought to hang a gallery wall, but actually it's not that difficult at all if you follow these simple steps. So here are some of the tools that will make your job a lot easier. If you have a roll of craft paper, that'd be great. Painter's tape and scissors and a pencil. And then a razor blade is really helpful if you are trying to get price tags off the frames and then something to help remove the goo that's left over. Um, definitely need your levels and a tape measure. I like to use um, for Light frames I like to use just a nail and of course a hammer um, but I also really like to use a 3M command velcro strips. They hold the frames in place and actually you can even hang the frames with these. After you have all your tools gathered you'll want to make a template for each frame that you have that you want to hang on the wall. Then you can lay your frames on the floor underneath the area that the gallery wall is gonna be hung. Then I would take the paper and I would hang it on the wall where you want the gallery wall to go and mirror what you've arranged on the floor. Just make sure that your colors and frames styles are evenly dispersed throughout the wall. When you get your papers up on the wall, you may need to do some adjusting as it doesn't always translate perfectly. Most of the main pieces I've tried to keep about one and three quarter inches apart. And then the, some of these pieces I kept closer together. This one, it just relates as one piece. These two are just in order to not go too big. But for the most part, they're running about one and three quarters apart. Once you have the papers exactly where you need them, then you can mark right on the paper exactly where the nail needs to go. And then I use my level to make sure those nails are going to go in level. Okay, okay. There. And it's level! So it doesn't really matter if your paper is extremely level because you're going to put your level onto the paper and draw a line that is level. The reason we've started here in the middle is just if things get a little bit off, then we can easily adjust as we go and make those same adjustments on this side. So you start in the middle and work out a little bit, work out a little bit, and then finish off and finish off. So when you wanna hang a frame that is difficult to hang for a variety of reasons. This frame handmade from Haiti is not level and so I can't use nails to rest it on. So I'm going to use this 3M Velcro. You just snap it together and you place it on the frame. Just make sure it's not poking above so that you see it. I'm going to have to take off my paper first so that I don't put the Velcro on the paper. and I'm just gonna hold it there. I can see it's level for 10 seconds to get a good stick. Voila! So for this frame, the frame is really narrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my 3M strip and I'm just gonna cut it in half. So just make sure that you're not hanging something heavy. Um, this is just to hold it into place, it's not hanging it and holding the weight of the whole frame. I rest it on the nails, holding it out from the bottom. And then I'm just gonna make sure it's level before I come down and press the Velcro into place. This frame came with a template that showed me exactly where to hang it. So it was really easy to just hang with one nail. But what we'll do is we'll put our Velcro strip on the bottom and that way, even though it's hanging on one nail, the Velcro strip is gonna hold that into place. And I do that for every one of the frames, which is especially important if it's in a hallway or somewhere where there's vibrating, kids bouncing around, your frames will stay on the wall and they'll all stay perfectly straight. Now that we're done getting everything level and taking all the paper away, we're going to take the tape off the wall, clean up and style the area. 
Hi, I'm Stefan Terschler, Product and Underwriting Manager for Square One Insurance Services. My job is to perform market research and develop coverage options that our customers can actually understand and make use of when they need it. When it comes to home insurance, fine art doesn't include commercially available, mass-produced pieces that you could buy in a store or online. Fine art means items that aren't widely available, and items whose value is usually a function of their rarity or how unique they are. Remember to think of the total value of your gallery wall. Each piece might be small by itself, but put them all together and you may have a few thousand dollars hanging on one wall. In the event that something does go wrong, you want to have coverage in place for it. Remember, personal property will take care of mass-produced items that you could buy at the same place you're gonna buy a microwave. Any items that cannot be easily replaced or aren't commercially available will need their own specific coverage as fine arts under your policy. If you have any questions, visit squareoneinsurance.com. So as you can see, we're done our gallery well. This is one of the more difficult types of gallery walls to hang because of the variety of sizes, types of frames, as well as the variety of media. But what I did was I dispersed the color of the frames equally throughout the whole gallery wall, as well as mostly the color of the media. If you take the time to plan and follow the steps that we talked about today, then you too can have a beautiful gallery wall. Thanks for watching.